So how do you dissent when the state has outlawed it? By calling a football club sh apparently. Berliner Fußball Club Dynamo had a not-so-secret patron during the existence of East Germany. The Ministry for State Security, the Stasi. In fact, the head of the Stasi, Erich Milka, would serve as the football club's honorary chairman, often delighting in its success. But this success was a double-edged sword. East Germans had reason to believe that the success wasn't natural. In fact, it helped to brew disillusionment in the East German game. Further, while the Stasi was supposedly wrapped up in the minutiae of the supporter culture of East Germany, they had missed a very key detail. East Germans still believed in a shared German identity, one that had developed long before the wall went up. The success of Dynamo and the East German state at the 1974 World Cup were held up to be Stasi triumphs. But in reality, they demonstrated the Stasi didn't understand their people. If there was one thing that was understood about Berliner Fußball Club Dynamo, it was that this was the Stasi's club. The club went on an unprecedented 10-year winning streak in the late 1970s, something so obvious that one East German citizen petitioned the government to step in. This has never happened in Albania or Malta, to say nothing of England, the Soviet Union, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, or Italy. Another would petition the East German Football Federation by bluntly saying the players and fans were likely to look outside of East Germany because of the favoring of BFC. I, too, see how football can look at Bayern Munich. The supporters of the club were heavily diverse, and they sang songs in praise of Erich Milka as a provocation. But if supporters of the club knew that they could provoke other fans by playing up their connection to the Stasi, could other fans use this connection to the security apparatus to criticize the state? As recounted in Alan McDougall's The People's Game, opposing fans weren't shy about highlighting the club's Stasi connections, chanting things such as, when the ref's merely neutral, then BFC is just second level, and every second person a spy. East Germans had a strong tradition in veiled forms of protest. Dissent was officially outlawed by the state. A rash of jokes about East Germany landed multiple citizens extra special attention by the Stasi in the early 1970s. And the Stasi, of course, were very familiar with football supporter culture in East Germany, especially after West Germany hosted the 1974 World Cup. There are pounds of Stasi files making sure that only the correct citizens could attend the 1974 World Cup, which was taking place right next door in West Germany. Not letting citizens travel to the World Cup would look bad, as the Stasi acknowledged. Not just on the international stage, but also inside of East Germany. The efforts taken by the state to secure the 1972 Olympics, which were also held in West Germany, had not gone unnoticed by the populace. But they couldn't just let anybody go to West Germany. The enemy, as it was called, would be looking for anything of propaganda value to use against the JDR. They needed citizens of whose politics were assured and wouldn't embarrass the state, something that was actually illegal under East German law. Thus, the Stasi were left to answer a question. How to make sure that the citizens that went to the West not only behaved, but came back. The solution was a more focused version of the restrictions already in place for travel. Everyone would be screened and selected for loyalty. One out of every ten were to be informants. All tourism would be kept to a minimum to prevent interactions with the enemy. These restrictions weren't made explicit to East German citizens, so some assumed that the tickets would be available for everybody. Or, in another interpretation, they figured that having their lives put under a microscope by the Stasi was worth it if they got World Cup tickets out of it. As a side note, that only certain citizens were given privileges by the state wasn't really unknown. Sasha Langa and DJ West Radio wrote about how Depeche Mode came to East Berlin in the 1980s, and it was understood that those in good standing with the FDJ would be invited. The Stasi's preparations were deemed successful, and they wrote many reports patting themselves on the back for it. Not only did the East German team beat the West German team, but only one person defected over the course of the trip. In the face of the West, East Germans had defeated them on their own land and rejected the trappings of the enemy. This was incredibly a success that proved the differences between the states. So when East Germany beat West Germany at the World Cup, you would think this would solidify the idea of separate German states. East Germans, after all, really enjoyed knocking their Western cousins down a peg. In 1970, Walter Ubrich had claimed that soon the two Germanys would be each speaking entirely separate languages. The East German government believed that their social society was moving past shared cultural ties. The success of the World Cup operation should have shown that ties between the two Germanys were gone. But when West Germany won the World Cup, East Germans celebrated the German victory. It didn't matter that this was a team from what their government was portraying as a completely separate culture. It was still German. Not only did the Stasi miss this, but so did the CIA. And this would get demonstrated even further three years later during the coffee crisis. The East German government was convinced that coffee was a socialist ideal. And thus their citizens having coffee, even if it came from the West, promoted an East German identity. But coffee had always been part of the German identity. 
Erich Honecker himself believed that cultural ties couldn't magic away the structural differences of each country. The Stasi were hyper-focused on making sure that modern Western influences, like Iron Maiden, didn't subvert the population. They were missing the culture that was already there. This brings me back around to dissent. Could criticizing the club be a way of criticizing the state? The Stasi certainly thought so. Collecting these cards scattered on the corner of Goethe-Strasse and Schoenweber-Strasse, where fans of crosstown rivals Union Berlin expressed their opinion. The notes were collected and cataloged by the Stasi, who, it must be noted, were paranoid pack rats at the best of times, and it's entirely possible that these notes were simply collected for typing samples. But the fact they were dropped so close to Stasi headquarters also was a veiled provocation. Ha ho he, Scheiß BFC, is about as subtle as a brick. But that's the thing, it could have just been a provocation directed at the club. It's a chant still used today. But the Stasi were hyper-focused on not missing any attacks on them, even if it came in the form of chant cards tossed on an East Berlin corner. What they were missing was that BFC had become a liability to the state. Sure, they represented the power of the Stasi, but it was that power that people resented. After the end of East Germany, BFC would no longer have the success that they did with the help of the Stasi. Their fortunes would bring them down to the fourth tier of German soccer. Union Berlin played against Real Madrid this year.